Hey, what's happening everybody? My name is Jeremy, in case you're new here, and today I'm gonna to be covering how to live stream 360 degree videos. So at this point in time, there's no all-in-one solution to do 4K live streaming in 360 degrees. They have the Ryko Theta, which can live stream, but I think it's limited at 1080p. And just recently, a few days ago, Video Stitch announced their new 4K 360 degree live streaming camera, which is gonna be available, I think, this summer. At this time, I think you can pre-order it for 1800, but if you wait and buy it after it comes out, it's gonna be closer to $4,000. But anyway, if you're like me, you have already been shooting 360 degree videos, and you already have the six GoPros, you have a 360 degree camera rig, and I wanna show you that it is possible to live stream using what you already have. It isn't easy, it does take a long time, it is expensive, but it is possible. So what I wanna do next is cover all the components that you need, so the hardware, I'm gonna cover the software, and uh, yeah, let's just get right into it. There's a lot to cover. All right, before I cover the components, the hardware, the software, I just wanna give you guys an overview of how this whole thing looks. So over here on the left, I got my six GoPro Hero 4 Blacks and a 360 camera rig, and I'm gonna be feeding HDMI to my laptop here, which has the software Vahana VR, that's by Video Stitch. So what that's doing is live stitching the six cameras, and we're gonna be uh, outputting a live stream from the laptop using RTMP. So I got two services here. We got Wowza and StreamShark. So those are out in the cloud on the internet. And what they're gonna be doing is transcoding those videos and then we'll be able to push that live feed to a smartphone, a laptop, and even an Oculus. So that's just a quick little overview of how this whole thing is gonna look. So let me cover the components now and we'll get right into that now. I got six GoPro Hero 4 Blacks here in the Freedom 360 mount. I removed the batteries from all the GoPros because they'll definitely overheat. So I'm powering the GoPros using USB. Now I'm also gonna be using an HDMI cable here with a left angle on there, so it's mini to a normal size HDMI. And the HDMI cable is going to this Magewell uh, dongle. So it's, a, it's an HDMI to USB 3.0. Now, what I have here to power the GoPros is a uh, you know, a hub, a USB hub to power it, and that's going directly into the power strip. And the USB cable here uh, is gonna be going into this 10 port uh, USB 3.0 hub. Only three are gonna go here because my laptop only supports four USB 3.0 ports. I got a pretty beefy laptop with a really good video card in there, so you're gonna want a laptop or a desktop with really good specs. Now you can also do this on a desktop computer uh, if you don't want to do it with the laptop. I like the laptop because it's portable, but if you want to do it on the desktop, you don't have to use these Magewell dongles. You can actually use uh, their other version, which actually just goes into the PC itself. So it goes into a PCI slot. But that pretty much covers all the hardware. Let's jump over to the software side. All right, we're gonna open up Vahana VR. This is gonna be the software that stitches everything together. Now, this is a free trial version. There are no limitations. It's basically uh, fully functional, but it has a watermark throughout your video. Now, I'm gonna go to new configuration. I'm gonna name it Vahana VR test. Hit that check mark, go to the next step. So here it says no input selected. So over to the right, we're gonna go to edit input. And these are my six USB to HDMI dongles. So I'm gonna choose every single one of them and then go to the next step. So for here, uh, display mode, I'm gonna leave it at 1920 by 1080, but for pixel form format, you're gonna change that to YUY2, and audio source at this point doesn't really matter, so I'm gonna leave it as no audio and save it. Check mark it. So now go to the next step, and we should see all the six cameras all around. So now the next step, to do is to stitch them together, which is something that I have a problem with and it never works for me. So you wanna to go to calibrate, create, uh, full frame fisheye, check mark, this, check mark, and then it should stitch them, but it, like I said, it never works for me. So, 
It'd be funny if it works right now. Okay, yeah, it doesn't work. Okay, great, that's what I expected. So Video Stitch's you know, response to when this doesn't work is basically move the camera in a different position and try to calibrate it again. But I've tried multiple different positions and it never ever works. So, the workaround. You gotta buy another software, it's called PT GUI. PT GUI is basically gonna allow you to stitch your you know six cameras together you're going to create a template and then what you can do is take that template and embed it into vr you know vahana vr and it'll stitch perfectly so what you want to do is i have my rig right there and what you want to do is just take a picture with the rig right in that position you have you can't move the camera S uh, take the picture on all six cameras. What I do is use the Wi-Fi remote, take a picture, and then save those pictures onto your computer, and now this is the next step. I have my six pictures here, and I named them in this order on purpose. So you notice this clip here, I'm in that shot. This is camera one, so let me just show you. Uh, well, it's camera zero, but it's still camera one, and then you got you know two, three, four, five, six, all the way down. Now. If you notice my pictures, I named them in the same sequence, so you have to do that. If you don't do that, it's not going to work. I'm going to open up PT GUI, and what I'm going to do is click Load Images, and I'm going to select these six pictures. Click Open. I'm going to uncheck Automatic and do this drop down here and do Full Frame Fisheye. Click Align Images, let it do its thing. Sometimes it's not going to find the control points. But basically, <clears throat> this looks pretty good. Now the next step would be to straighten this all out. So I'm not gonna do that right now because it's gonna take a while, but basically, like I said, straighten it out. And then once you're done straightening it out, go back to this window here, go to File, and then click Save as a Template, and just remember where you save it. So once you save that template, we're gonna push that back to Vahana VR. Okay, we're back in Vahana VR. We're gonna go to Configuration, we're gonna go to calibration and we're gonna select that template that we created. So here's my template, six cam template. I'm gonna click open and then I'm gonna click apply and click the check mark. And now we have a successfully stitched video. So yeah, those are the watermarks I was talking about and you can see it's not perfect, but if you want it to be perfect, you're gonna have to go into PT GUI and you know do that. So interactive, basically that's what it's gonna look like. And you notice we have some dead space here. So one thing you can do in Vahana VR is adjust the exposure. You can notice all the dark areas. So you just click these settings on the side and it'll actually fix the exposure for all the cameras. So that looks a lot better. All right, first step done. We were able to live stitch the six cameras together. We needed to create a template though using PT GUI, but everything looks fine for now. Now, the next step is to push this stream from Vahana VR out into the cloud. We're gonna do Wowza, Wowza first and then StreamShark. There's two ways of using Wowza. You can have your own dedicated server running their software, or you could run it out in the cloud. So I've already created a stream that I would use, but I wanna walk you through the steps to get it set up for yourself. So we're gonna to go to add live stream. And basically what you wanna do is just name your stream. So I'm gonna do test stream. Now down below here, you're gonna choose your location. What's the closest uh, you know, area to you? So you know I'm on the East Coast in the US, so I'm gonna click US East. Now what you wanna do here is choose a video source and we're gonna do other RTMP. And you wanna select push stream. And now the next thing you need to do is click disable authentication. Um, let me just double check everything here. Okay, looks good, we're gonna go to next. And um, I'm gonna click responsive, so maximize player width depending on the device. And I don't need any of these settings, so I'm gonna go to next. And you know, you could create your title, your description. I'm gonna disable the social links. And um, I'll just put, you know, test again here. Uh, we'll go to next. Now you just review your settings and then click finish. I'm gonna skip this, cancel this, and go to the one that I made already and show you the settings there. So here's the setup that I have already. So basically the most important thing that we need here is this primary server address and this stream name. So to input that stream, we're gonna to go to configuration, outputs, 
create a new output RTMP stream, go to the next step. And in this area, we're going to paste that link. And then we have to type that stream name. So it's 8B14, 8B14, E39B. Okay, let's click save on that and click the check mark. So we're gonna go back to this and the next step is to go back to Wowza and click start stream. So I'm gonna click start and it takes a few seconds, maybe a minute to get it finally started, but it'll let you know. Okay, here we go, it says it's ready. So I'm gonna go back to Vahana VR and click this and it should say live streaming and it says that, so that's good. It says no video detected as of right now, but it should take a second. Okay, there we go, we see the live stream. Let's go to playback and let's see how it looks. It's gonna, like I said before, this is gonna be flat. It's not gonna be interactive at all. You have to create your own player. So there it is. Now what I wanna show you how to do next is how to watch this live stream on your smartphone. So I'm gonna show you the app to get, but this is gonna be the link that you wanna capture. The one that says Apple HLS. So the app you're gonna wanna get is called Sphere Play and basically the top three dots at the top right and then click open URL and then click okay and the stream should start playing. So this is one weird thing I was running into, but basically, yeah, all you gotta do is click that button there, it's hard to do with one hand, and you could watch it, you know, with Google Cardboard, which, that's me right there, look at that, that's cool. Um, or you can turn that off and, one second, okay, there you go. You can turn that off and watch it like this. So, it's kind of weird watching this doing it live because I'm there, but I'm not. Uh, really weird. Uh, but how crazy is this? This is really cool. So Wowza worked out pretty good. It was fairly simple to set up. Um, nothing to complain about. The only thing is that, you know, they don't have a 360 player. You have to develop one yourself, jump on GitHub. I think I found a few on there. So if you're looking to have it be able to be played on a desktop, then you're gonna have to look into that. If you want it to be played on a smartphone, then it's pretty simple to do. Now we're gonna try out StreamShark and see how well that one works out. All right, now I'm gonna show you how to use StreamShark to capture this stream. Uh, this also comes with a free trial. So really simple, go to the live streaming tab on the left, click add new, and then basically all you do is name your stream, give it a title if you want, put a description, you have to put a password, and um, that's pretty much it. And then if you want to adjust the stream settings or anything like that, uh, you could do that. So after you uh, create your stream, you're gonna click save here at the bottom right, and you can see here it takes about 40 minutes to deploy, and yes, it in fact took about 40 minutes, so you're gonna have to wait a little bit for that stream to be set up. So I have my stream already done here, and basically the most important part that we need to capture here is this address and also this stream one URL. So we're gonna type out this address in Vahana VR in the RTMP stream URL, and then we're gonna do a slash on the end and then add this. Now, as I mentioned before, StreamShark has a native 360 degree player, so you wanna to go to player template and then go to edit and all you have to do is, by default, this is set to no, so just click yes, and basically I named my template Vahana VR. So after you would go to live streaming, and then you would click on edit, and then in the player template, you wanna just add your you know player template that you did, so Vahana VR. So again, you wanna go to configuration, outputs, and you're gonna put that address in there. So one problem with Vahana VR is it doesn't like the question mark, and the and symbol here. So what I had to do was go to the Vahana VR projects folder and edit it manually in there. So make sure you got the right file folder here. <laughs> you wanna go to, uh, it's usually you know in users, Jeremy, that's you know my account name, Vahana VR, and then projects folder. So I'm gonna open this up. I'm gonna search for StreamShark. So copy that link from, Stream, from StreamShark in here and it will not get rid of the question mark and and symbol. I was running into that problem and StreamShark 
with their awesome, amazing support, was able to help me with that. And I got it running in, like immediately after I figured that out. I was struggling with this for so long. But yeah, okay, so I'm gonna do on, I'm gonna stream this, and we're gonna go to Stream Shark to check out the stream. And there's actually one more step that I forgot to mention. After you create your live stream, you need to go to streaming event, create a new event, and use that same URL that you made, that you got from live streaming. So now we can preview the live um, video. Refresh this so we can check it out. Make sure Vahan is still running. Hit play. Okay, here we go. So the one thing I noticed is that when you use Chrome, it actually doesn't work. So I'm using Internet Explorer here, or now they call it Microsoft Edge or something. Um, so it is interactive in Internet Explorer. Now I can make the quality better, but my internet you know, connection is not that great. But this is, yeah, it's cool. It, this is StreamSharks built-in player that you can use. All right, so that's gonna conclude this tutorial on how to stream 360 degree videos online. We checked out the two services, Wowza and StreamShark. Both services work great, they're easy to set up. Uh, StreamShark might be a little more attractive to certain people because it has its built-in 360 player, but overall they're both great services. So like I said in the beginning of this video, eventually Video Stitch is gonna be coming out with their new 4K 360 live streaming camera. I'd love to test that out. That would be so cool, but not sure if that's going to happen. But, you know, as time goes on, it's going to become a lot easier. This process is a little tedious, a lot of work, and it's it's just not um, something that people would probably want to do because it's just it's too much work. But anyway, I definitely enjoyed doing this. It was a cool little test to try out, and uh, maybe I'll do some more future tests using this system. But that's it. I hope you guys found this tutorial helpful, and I'll see you in my next video. Hey, what's going on everybody? So I've been getting a lot of questions about my 360 degree videos and I wanna put a quick video together explaining the process, the things you need, software, accessories, to make your own 360 videos. So let's jump right in. The first thing you need to know is that there's different 360 mounts that you can buy. The one I'm using here, this is the Freedom 360 and there's another company out there called 360 Heroes. 